We borrow the phrase from the man whose memory we have gathered here to honor and address you as he would have if it was him reading this statement as my dear brothers and sisters. Today, as we have done annually over the past 12 years, we are gathered here again to memorialize the life of a remarkable son gifted to this dear nation of ours. Each year, our healed wounds open up again in raw pain when we remember the untimely passing of our dearly beloved president, Professor John Evans Atamels. We are resigned to the fact that we may not completely heal from the ever-present shock of his passing 12 years ago. He lived a life of unquestionable integrity and absolute humility in the service to the nation he loved, Ghana. Prof, as we all popularly called him, no doubt is a special foil to the kind of leadership Ghanaians have had to grapple with over the last seven and a half years. He is the exact antithesis of what we've been going through today. If I were to speak of this great man, what he meant to us as a party, as a nation, there will not be enough time. We will clearly not live here today. It hurts deeply that we have to make reference to our dear former president in the past tense, especially at this time when his vision, his direction, and his values, which he had in abundance and which Ghana so desperately needs, are in such short supply in our country today. My boss, Professor Mills, was a selfless leader. He prioritized the needs of the nation over his personal and any political gain, unlike the situation we see in Ghana today. He was the first to cut his own salary as a sincere gesture to show solidarity with the economic hardships faced by many Ghanaians at the time when he took over from the NPP administration. He was passionate about lifting the venerable and duly allocated resources to social welfare programs. He was a man who epitomized truth and honesty. From his life in academia through his time as the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service to when he became Vice President and throughout his presidency, Professor Mills lived as he preached, transparently and honestly. His reputation for integrity was widespread nationally and internationally. He was a nationalist, he was a social democrat, and a true patriot. His policies were deliberately geared towards the development and unity of Ghana. He promoted his Better Ghana agenda, which aimed at boosting economic growth, improving infrastructure, and enhancing social services for all Ghanaians. And I stress on all Ghanaians. His commitment to the national interest over regional, ethnic, or partisan considerations exemplified this nationalist spirit. He was a responsible president. He carefully managed our nation's resources and implemented fiscal policies that aimed at economic stability. And being a responsible leader, he was cautious about excessive borrowing and focused on sustainable development, ensuring that projects were completed efficiently and within budget. President Mills believed in fixing problems. He took proactive steps to address the challenges facing his nation, Ghana. We recall how he tackled the Schools Under Trees program by constructing new school buildings and providing educational resources and thereby improving the learning environment 
for hundreds of thousands of school children across the country. The good professor was accountable. He held himself and his administration accountable to the public, which is a stark opposite to what we see today. He encouraged the Public Accounts Committee to start sitting in public and allowing televised sessions of the committee. His open door policy allowed citizens to voice their concerns directly and thereby engendering a culture of accountability. Professor Mills was fair, but he was firm. His administration was characterized by a fair approach to governance. And he was balanced with firm decision making. He ensured that laws were enforced impartially, regardless of political affiliation. He allowed the legal process to take its course without interference. He was the undisputed Asunjuehene, the man of peace par excellence. He was known for his calm demeanor and gentle nature. President Mills approached leadership with empathy and compassion. His interaction with both colleagues and the general public were marked by kindness and respect. Indeed, throughout his life, President Mills advocated for and demonstrated a life of peace and nonviolence. His tenure was marked by a commitment to maintaining political stability and social harmony. He was not a vindictive president. He often engaged in dialogue with the opposition parties and community leaders to resolve conflict amicably. Professor Mills was a unifier, a man who worked tirelessly to bridge the divide within Ghanaian society. And that is why he was popularly referred to with the accolade, Father for All. My comrade and mentor, President Mills, was a respecter of the rule of law and did not abuse his powers as president. He exercised his presidential powers with grace, restraint, dignity, respect, and respect for democratic principles. He avoided using his position for personal or political gain, and he consistently sought to uphold the Constitution and the rights of all Ghanaians. It was to prevent the kind of abuse of presidential and executive powers that he planted the seeds for a constitutional review. This is an undertaking that we, the NDC, are duty bound to complete for the people of Ghana and the memory of Professor Mills when we win the upcoming elections and take office on 7 January 2025. Just like the famous writer William Shakespeare in his famous play said, and that the play is measure for measure, he said it is excellent to have the strength of a giant, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. Our professor president did not allow the trappings of power to make him a tyrant. He was a Democrat true and true. And as a steward managing the economy, his record remains phenomenal and unsurpassed in the Fourth Republic. Ghana, historically under his tenure, recorded its highest ever GDP growth rate of 14.4%, with a larger contribution coming from the rail sector rather than the oil sector in the decades under his administration. In addition, his record of single-digit inflation for over 30 months remains unbroken. Today we miss him sorely because all the values he stood for, lived for, and died for have been reversed through naked arrogance, arrant abuse, and absolute recklessness, causing the good people of Ghana enormous anguish, 
and suffering. But we shall not give up. We shall continue to strive and fight to put Ghana back on the track that he would have been proud of if he were alive today. I want to thank all of you who did our party, our nation, our continent, our president, the honor of coming to pay our respects to him today. Prof, thank you for all you did for our party. Thank you all you did for our nation, Ghana. And thank you for all you did for the continent of Africa. May you continue to rest eternally in the bosom of your maker, whom you loved and served to the end. May the almighty God bless us all. Thank you very much.